Welcome back to AP Chemistry. In this video, we're going to be continuing our discussion of the mathematics of acid-base titrations. Now, in the previous video, we looked at strong acids and strong bases and how they're titrated together and that mathematics. So if you ha haven't had a chance to, to watch that video, go ahead and do that. Uh, and in this video, we're looking at something that's more advanced. This is probably the, the toughest uh, type of titration problem potentially when we have strong bases and weak acids combined together. So the math on this is a little bit more involved. And that's having to do with the fact that uh, we don't have a, a perfect 7 as a pH at the equivalence point every time like we did in a strong base, strong acid. It's going to be different. And so we have to do the calculation on that every time. Now, whenever you write the equation for these reactions, you know the strong base is always going to be represented as hydroxide, as we learned in a previous lesson. And the weak acid will be whatever its, its formula is. And of course, the products will be water and the conjugate base of the acid. So this is just the generic formula for that, where X is the anion that's attached to the hydrogen ion in uh, the, the reaction of the titration. Now, something that's important to remember is that after you start the titration, but before the equivalence point, the mixture is going to be a buffer. And so we do have a little shortcut because we can actually use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to figure out the pH of that. If you don't know what that is, you can watch one of my previous videos that uh, talks about that. So let's take a look at this example here. And this is fairly complex. It's going to take a little time to get through this problem. In a titration, we have 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide that's being titrated into 30 milliliters of 0.2 molar acetic acid. So part A says determine the amount of sodium hydroxide required to reach the equivalence point. So this sounds like a titration equation type of problem, and it is. We're just going to plug in to MAVA equals MBVB. So the molarity of the acid is right here. It's 0.200 molar. So that goes in here. And then the volume of the acid, what well says that we used 30 milliliters of that? So that's going to go in for M sub A. Now the molarity of the base is also given to us. It's 0.100 molar. Now, the volume of the base, well, that's what we're trying to find, the amount of sodium hydroxide required to reach that equivalence point. So we're going to have to put VB as our unknown. So we just do the simple algebra on this, and we find that the answer is 60 milliliters. And so it's going to require 60 milliliters to get to that equivalence point. So let's go on to part B. What is the pH after only 10 milliliters of the base have been added. Well, we're going to have to treat this as a uh, strong base weak acid problem. So we have to write out the equation, and we're going to have to do this using moles. We have to calculate the moles. So here's the equation for what's going on here. We have the hydroxide, the strong base, being added to the acetic acid, and the products are acetate ion and and water. And we have to look at this in terms of moles. So we're going to set up an ice box. Now, how many moles of acid do we have here? Well, it says right here we have 0 0.030 liters at 0.2 moles per liter. So that is 0 0.006 moles. So we'll put that in for moles of acetic acid. Now the moles of hydroxide, well, it's 0.1 molar, and we've added 0 0.010 liters, 10 milliliters. So we multiply that out, and it's 0 0.001 moles. So we'll put that in here for hydroxide. Does it look like we have any acetate added into this? So that'll be a zero. And we don't really care about the moles of water. So do we see which one is going to be the limiting reactant here? Well, there's less hydroxide, so that's the one that runs out first. So we have negative 0.001 for both reactants on the left side here, and a positive 0.001 moles on the product side. So 
This is, or these are the values for moles for acetic acid, 0 0.005 and 0 0.001 moles for acetate. Now, we need to figure out what the actual concentrations of these are. So we're going to divide both of these numbers by the liters. Now, how many liters do we have? Well, we started with 30 milliliters, and we've just added 10 milliliters. So it's 40 milliliters total, or 0 0.04 liters. So we do that division for the acetic acid, and we get 0.125 molar of acetic acid. We do the same thing for acetate. We take 0 0.001 moles and then divide that by the 0.04 liters, the, vol the total volume, and we get 0 0.025 molar. Now, at this point, we realize, hopefully, that we have a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, which is a buffer, like we said a few slides ago. So we can solve this using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which looks like this. And so uh, it told us what Ka was up higher in the problem, 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. So we have to take the negative log of that and then plus the log of the base, 0.025, over the acid concentration, 0.125. And so when we do that, it uh, looks like the negative log of the Ka is, uh, let's see here, we add in the other one. I'm getting a value of about 4.05. So once again, that seems to be the answer. Now, if you don't like the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, you don't have to use it you can actually set this up as a second ice box using molarity. But most students find that this equation uh, is, is a nice little shortcut. Well, that's only part B. We have to go on to part C here. So at this point, we kind of have to do the whole process over. And so once again, we've got the equation. We're going to set up an ice box. The moles of acetic acid really hasn't changed it's still going to be um, 0.2 molar times 0 0.03 liters, so that's still 0 0.006 moles. But the hydroxide moles will be different now. And that's mainly because we have 0.1 molar times 30 milliliters, or 0 0.03 liters. So when we multiply that out, we get 0 0.003 moles. So that is different. Now, at this point, of course, we don't have any acetate that we've uh, particularly added here. So which one runs out first? Once again, it's still the hydroxide that runs out first. So we subtract 0 0.003 from both on the left, and we add 0 0.003 to the right. And here's what we get for our number of moles of acetic acid and acetate. They happen to be the same. And so to find the molarity, we divide these by the total volume. So we started with 30 milliliters of acid. We added 30 milliliters of base. So that's 60 milliliters total. So we're going to take 0 0.003 and divide by 0 0.060 liters there. So we get 0 0.05 molar acetic acid. We do the same thing for acetate, 0 0.003 moles divided by 0 0.06 liters. And of course, it's the same and we can plug this into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So plug that in there. And it's interesting that 0 0.05 over 0 0.05 is 1. And the log of 1 is 0. And so the pH is just equal to the negative log of Ka, which is 4.74. And this is not a coincidence that this happens, because if you'll notice up here, we said earlier on that it's going to take 60 milliliters to get to the equivalence point. And we're at 30. We're halfway there. Well, this is actually a nice little shortcut, because at the halfway point of a weak acid strong base titration, pH just equals pKa. And so on the AP exam, or on any other exam, I suppose, you can write this as a shortcut. As long as you realize you're, that you're at the halfway point, 
pH equals negative log of Ka. And you can save yourself all this work here and just say that and just calculate what that is, 4.74. So that's a nice little thing to know. Let's go on to part D now. What happens at 60 milliliters? Well, we just said that that is the equivalence point. Now, let's demonstrate that so we can see what's going on here and we can get some numbers to back that up. Here's our equation again. Here's our ice box. The moles of the acid will still be what it was before, 0 0.03 liters times 0.2 molar. So that's, that's still 0 .06, 0 0.006 moles. Uh, the hydroxide will be different now. Uh, it's you know 0 0.06 liters times 0 0.1 molar. So that's 0 0.006. And so that goes in for hydroxide. And of course, acetate is still zero. So you see what's happening here at the equivalence point is we have the exact, and I mean the exact, same numbers of acid as we have moles of base. And so that's what we mean when we say we're at the equivalence point. Now, at that particular point, well, which one is the limiting reactant? Well, it's both of them, actually, because they both run out at the same time. And we add 0 0.006 over here. Now, this leaves us with an interesting point because this is no longer a buffer. Because remember, a buffer, by definition, is a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base. Well, the weak acid is all gone. So it's not a buffer anymore. The buffer has completely disappeared. All we have is the weak base here. And so as a result, we have to work this problem as a weak base problem. And that's a, that's a little bit more involved, but that's okay. We can do that. There's no Henderson-Hasselbalch equation this time. We're, we're going to have to, to work the, the problem all the way through. So we are going to have to calculate the molarity of this. So 0 0.006 moles divided by the total volume. We had 30 mils up here plus 60. So that's 90 mils, or, or that's where our 0 0.090 liters comes from. So we have 0 0.0667 molar of acetate. Now, what is the pH of this weak base? Well, to find the pH of a weak base, we have to know the Kb value. And we weren't given the Kb value. We were given the Ka value. So we're going to have to divide that out. We have to take uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 14th and divide by the Ka for the acid it was associated with, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5th, which we got earlier. So when we divide that out, the Kb is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. And so now we're going to have to work this as a weak base problem. So we have to write the you start to go under the slide here. We have to write the dissociation of the base. So we add it to water. We get acetic acid and the conjugate base, which is hydroxide. Set up an ice box. We said the concentration was 0 0.0667. So that goes in here. And then we have 0 and 0 for the other side there. And then... The change here will be a minus x, and then the right side plus x and plus x, so we have that. And now we can set these into the Kb expression for the dissociation of the acetate. So Kb is going to look like this, products over reactants. And we're just going to plug these values in. And we see a minus x here that can be obliterated because it looks like it's pretty small. So that Kb value is really tiny. We can cross multiply and take the square root. When we do that, we get that x equals 6.11 times 10 to the negative sixth. And so the significance of x is that that is equal to the hydroxide concentration. So if we take the negative log of that, negative log of hydroxide is going to be the pOH, and so that is 5.21. And to find the pH, we just subtract that from 14, and we get 8.79. And so this is kind of a lengthy process to find out that the pH at the equivalence point, 60 mils, 
is 8.79. And this makes sense, hopefully, because when you add a strong base to a weak acid, you would expect the resulting solution to be slightly basic, and that's what we have here. It's a little bit over 7. You know, it's close to, to 9, somewhere in that neighborhood. Well, we're still not done with the problem. This is a very long problem, as you can see, because we still have part E. It says, what happens when we have 61 mils added? So let's do that part of the problem. Now, once again, we've got to do the, the whole, I have to start from, from the beginning there with the equation that we had earlier. Have an ice box for moles. We've got to calculate the moles again. Now, the moles of, uh, of acetic acid will be the same. It's still uh, 0.03 liters times 0.2 molar which is still the 0 0.006. That still goes in for the moles of acetic acid here. Now the moles of hydroxide will be different. This time it's uh, 0.1 molar times 0 0.061 liters. And so that's 0 0.0061 moles. So that goes in here. And moles of acetate will be zero, of course. So now what's the limiting reactant? Hopefully, you can see that it's not hydroxide like it was before. It's not both of them at the same time like it was in Part D, but actually it's the acid that runs out first. And so we can subtract 0 0.006 from the left, sides, left side and add 0 0.006 to the right side, and we find that we have 1 times 10 to the minus 4th moles of hydroxide, a mixture of a strong base and a weak base. And when you have a strong base and a weak base, well, you know, the strong base is going to beat out that weak base every time. So we can really ignore the weak base because it's not going to do a whole lot for us here. Now we have to find the molarity of the hydroxide. That's going to be the, the moles of hydroxide divided by liters. So this time it's 30 mils of the acid plus 61 mils of the base. So that's 91 milliliters. So we have to take the 0 0.0001 moles of hydroxide and divide by 0 0.091 liters. And so when we do that, we find that the hydroxide concentration is 0 0.0011 molar. And if we know the hydroxide concentration, we're in the home stretch because we can take negative log of that to find the pOH. So that's going to be equal to 2.96. And of course, if we know the pOH, then finding the pH is a breeze because we just subtract that from 14 and we get 11.04. And so a fairly lengthy problem. It took us, what, over 15 minutes to, to work that problem. Now let's take a look at the titration curve for this because it is different, as you can see. Um, notice that it looks somewhat similar to the titration curve for a strong base, strong acid titration, but it's kind of shifted upwards because we never had a strong acid in there to start with. It was a weak acid, so the pH started out a little higher. But the same idea ha happens here. As we add base, uh, the pH doesn't go up very much. And then all of a sudden, we get very, very close to this equivalence point and the pH just shoots up very quickly. And then, once again, once you get significantly past the equivalence point, it starts to level out again. So we're going to do the same thing for this titration curve as we did in the last video and look at that inflection point, so that point right there. And so if we notice that inflection point, that is the equivalence point. And so if we point that out, make a little a circle or something there, we can actually trace this over and see what the pH is. At the, and look at that. It was very, very close to what we said it was going to be, just a little bit less than 9. And so just by looking at this titration curve, we can tell that this is a strong base weak acid. Now there's something else we can do here as well, because we said that at the halfway mark. So this, if we want to make a little downward 
kind of hard to make a straight line on this thing here, but if I go straight down approximately, that is the equivalence point, the amount of base required for that. Now half of that, which would be right around here somewhere, that's about the halfway mark. If we go up to the titration curve, and we get around here, well, we said a couple of slides ago that the pH is equal to the pKa at the halfway point. And so if we find out what the pH is, at the halfway point, we can actually figure out the pKa of the acid. And so uh, it looks like it's about four and a half. And so that's a good way to estimate the pKa of the acid, just using this titration curve. So once again, at the uh, halfway point, the concentration of the uh, acid is equal to the uh, uh, concentration of uh, uh, the base that's in there. Okay, so that's at the halfway point. Whereas at the equivalence point, the moles of acid will be equal to the moles of base. And so there's a little distinction there that we kind of have to, to think about. So this is uh, concentration uh, and that's moles over there. So that's, that's an interesting thing about the titration curve. All right, well, this has been going on long enough, so we're going to stop here. Hope you've enjoyed this, and even if you didn't, I know this is a long problem. Hope you learned something about titration curves and how to work these problems. If you learned something, please give me a thumbs up, and I hope you have subscribed to my channel, and hope to see you again here uh, on my YouTube channel or at krugslist.org, where we can learn some more chemistry together.